Good evening, Colorado. My name is Susan Green. I'm the editor of the Colorado Independent, and I am guest hosting this evening. My special guest, the man who in the corner of my eye is trying to make me laugh and uh, kind of set me off on my game here, is like none that's other that hard to do. than uh, the devil's advocate himself, John Caldera. John, welcome to the show tonight. I have no idea why I agreed to this, but it's so pleasant to be here. Please, remember I have 12 viewers and you've already lost two of them. <sighs> That's so insulting. You already pissed off the audience. Yes. Okay, so listen, we need some ground rules, okay? And I want the audience to know there's been no kind of discussion of how this is going to go, but the audience should know if they don't know you personally, you are the master of sort of sixth grade boy, non-answer sort of uh, retorts. Like, do you never really that's answer what, questions seriously? That's what I'm not, you this say. is not that's a question. And that's you're, what you you're, say. I'm talking over you that. now. No, you are. What so am I? let's just agree that you're not going to do that because the audience doesn't like that. They're going I to think less of you. I will answer any question you give me. All right. All right. Good. Not so, accurately. Uh, all right. Really? Come on, we've only, we've only got three minutes here. Okay. Go. Okay. Uh, so you lost at the Supreme Court this week. Yes. Um, you were crushed. Um, I think pundits were calling it a sort of emasculating experience and um, demoralizing. <laughs> but what's your view of it? When you've been rejected by women as often as I have, mm -hmm. rejection gets a lot easier. So when the Supreme Court rejected the Independence Institute case, on uh, free speech versus McCain-Feingold, I cried a little bit. I ate some ice cream, and talked to my girlfriends, and, and it was fine. Uh, so this, this case is sort of tricky because sometimes you're like on the right side. You know what I mean? You're into on, sort of public disclosure and transparency when it's convenient to you, but in that case, you weren't so much. Can you tell us about it? I'm always for transparency. Transparency is for government. Privacy is for people. At issue at this case was, do organizations like the Independence Institute have the right to free speech? Well, we do. We can put out certain statements. But under McCain-Feingold, when it's 60 days before an election, we lose that right. So in other words, our First Amendment rights are subservient to somebody else's calendar. Right, so they let you sort of work around all sorts of uh, uh, regulations and basically make up new ways to practice dark money expenditures and that's what you were sort of uh, rallying for here. Oh absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. Um, We want that dark evil money. Got it. We'll, so, we'll even take white money. So how can you really, I mean, is it not in people's best interest to know who's trying to influence elections before elections? Well, be careful. The ad that we were trying to put out had nothing to do with elections. What it did was to talk to our senators. Now, we can put out an ad any time to ask our senators, would you please vote this way or maybe vote that way on an issue? We could do that on Tuesday. We couldn't do it on Wednesday because... Know, because, because you're a troublemaker and you don't really believe it had nothing to do with elections and you don't really believe, do you, that it the had, timing... I tell you what, I think mm -hmm. what you're asking about is the idea of donor privacy. Uh -huh. When people give to organizations like the Independence Institute or many groups on the left, do they have a right to give money anonymously? Is there such a thing as anonymous speech? I agree strongly, yes. Uh, the idea goes back to organizations like the NAACP, who, if not funded by people who um, were against slavery, would not exist. And if those donors were found out, they would have been lynched. I think about Planned Parenthood down in Colorado Springs. I was shot up by a madman. I wonder, would it be better if that madman knew where all the donors to that Planned Parenthood was? There's a reason why people want to keep their privacy and still have their ability to express themselves. At the Independence Institute, we have, for instance, teachers who might give us 50 bucks, and if their union ever found out, their jobs could be over. You think all of that was at stake with this case? That wasn't at stake with that, this case. What was at stake was do organizations like mine and organizations like Planned Parenthood or any other group have a right to speak or does that speech get cut because of an election cycle? And, so and by the way, the Supreme Court, most likely because uh, 
the conspiracy to kill you know, um, uh, Scalia. Thank you, because I, I, I knew it was a journalist who did it. Yeah. Um, we probably would have made it, but the, the Supreme Court decided not to take our case, which I means... I know, you're blaming, it. It, you're blaming it all on the fact that Gorsuch isn't on there, right? Yes. Mm -hmm, because you think had he been, they would have granted cert? I think so. Mm -hmm. I can't know for certain. Do you have some sort of connection with Gorsuch? Like this. Mm -hmm. Like this. I got it. So, uh, moving on. How's this Trump thing going for you? Loving it! Absolutely loving it, because even though I wasn't a huge Trump fan, what I love about it is how people like you in the media are just losing their stuff, and that is worth it all. Every day it's another new panic on national public radio and, and news sites like yours, and that's worth the price of admission. So, I mean, you were really against Trump really against Trump at the beginning. Of I was time. really against Trump at the beginning. Yeah. The reason being, I didn't think he could win. Okay, so how much are you kind of enjoying this sort of massive climate of deregulation? And it's not a massive climate of deregulation yet. No, it's just One a massive climate of executive <laughs> orders purporting, you know, leading to deregulation. But I mean, do you hope have so. like sort of secret parties in the Independence Institute, that weird bunker thing you've got underground? We have. We don't call them parties. We we have rituals. Mm -hmm. uh, we sacrifice virgins, and and it's it's a good thing. It's it's a conservative thing. You would understand. So, is there any piece of his agenda or his presidency that you are critical of, or is it just all great? Right now, it is mostly all great. Mind you, the guy's been in for forty days. Mm -hmm. Handling of some of these things have been terrible. His executive order on immigration was handled poorly. The immigration thing is is not my world. That, that is, does not uh, concern me as much as uh, strong dollar, tax deregulation, uh, getting a good guy in the Supreme Court. It's not that America, a lot of us voted for Trump not because we voted for Trump. We voted against Hillary and we voted for Antonin Scalia. Okay, let's not go backward. Let's go forward. Let's though. go forward. I mean, then. are there cringy moments for you like today or this week with Jeff Sessions and all of the sort of spin about Russia, does that concern you? I mean, does it get cringy when Kellyanne Conway is like on the couch with uh, her shoes off on her? No, oh, seriously, that was a, like that, that is, off. I knew, I, you agreed not to do this at the beginning of the show, what? so honor your agreement. Is it cringy for you that somehow he's marring our presidency in our country or embarrassing us in any I, way? Wait a second. We had a guy who was receiving fellatio and lied about it in that room. It's not like this guy is bringing more disgrace. There was an article comparing him to punk rock. And I thought that was an interesting thought because punk rock, they knew three chords, four chords. And so they knew three chords and they weren't good, they weren't polished, but yet they made, they made a difference. In the same way, this guy is not smooth. He, he's bumbling through this, and people are enjoying it. Um, yeah, there are cringe moments, but you know what? I think those cringe moments happen more on the left because they can't believe it's real. And I'm enjoying watching the left melt down during each one of these moments. So, you know, what I find sort of interesting is we grew up in the Cold War, you know, like your people were all freaked out about Russia. You talking and, about and Italians? Suddenly, talking about Italians? Suddenly, your people are not all freaked out about Russia. How do we come oh, to grips with that? Let me tell you, I'm very freaked out about Russia. Mm -hmm. I'm freaked out about Russian aggression. I'm freaked out about what, what's going on in, in the Ukraine. The difference is, growing up, you and I heard Sting singing about if only the <laughs> Russians love their children too. <laughs> it is so enjoyable to see the left become so hawkish and scared of, of Russia. I, where were they during the Cold War? Where were, oh yes, they loved Russia during Look, the Cold War. Your three viewers who are still watching this don't care about what happened in the 80s. I mean, you what, brought it up. how alarmed are you folks about what's going on? And even the Jeff Sessions I issue, I mean, is this? At this point, we're not alarmed at all. Okay. And partly because every time something like this happens, uh, the whole White House press corps pulls the fire alarm. Oh my God, this is the worst thing that's ever happened. Oh my God, did you see what he said today? This is, this is too much. Uh, and so every time the fire alarm gets pulled, most Americans yawn. We'll find out if Jeff Sessions actually had meaningful conversations or did he just say hello to the guy at a cocktail party. 
the amazing thing is I don't think most Americans care. So, you know, you and I are friends, kind of. You want to you you admit that? And kind of. Kind of. Um, kind of. You know, we, we believe that children are the future, right? We can agree on that. As long as you're allowed to sell them, yeah, mm -hmm. you can make yeah. a good profit off those. So, you sell know, there's just such too. a divide in sort of conversation here. And, um, you know, I think folks on the left just want to know in clear, plain English why you people are so scared are and we, cheap you people? and gun toting and woman hating and mean. Wow, that's a tough one. One, because it's enjoyable. Two, because we come from a philosophy that an individual is sovereign. And therefore, government is to, there to help protect our liberties and our sovereignty. And so people love their guns because it helps them not only defend themselves, but in our mind it helps in the long run against tyranny. That's why we have a free country. Why we're so mean and cheap? No, we're actually remarkably generous when it comes to giving our own looking, money. I was looking like at your shoes when we were talking about cheap. Yeah. But these aren't bad. Yeah, no, they're not. Not actually. bad. See, yeah. I wore them just for you. Mm -hmm. um, um, what was the other one? Women hating. Women hating. Mm -hmm. oh, no, we don't. We and don't. scared. Oh, we're scared all the time. No, we do we hate women? No, we don't hate women. I think about the Independence Institute. My, my chairman is a woman. Your chairwoman? No, she goes by chairman. Mm -hmm. And she's a woman. Most of my board, are, uh, half my board's women. My executive vice president is a woman. Some of my best friends are Some women. Some of my best women, mm -hmm. you know, most of the staff are women. So, you know, for, for a philosophy that hates broads, we seem to do pretty well. So you have on your little email signature something about bullies. What does it say? I hate bullies. Yeah, you hate bullies. And I actually know you well enough to know that. But you also have a son with some disability, and we have a president who has mocked people with disabilities. How do you reconcile that? I mock my son every day mm -hmm. and talk about bullying. He bullies me every day. My son, Chance, has Down syndrome. He's like living with John Belushi. And you know how much I love him, and you know how much fun he is. But it doesn't mean I fall into a politically correct world where we don't have Fun and we can't say things. No, but if Chance were doing his job and somebody in a position of power started mocking his disability, how would you as a parent feel about that? You've got I 21 would, seconds. I wouldn't care. I wouldn't I, care unless somebody did something. See, I think your team, your team says how they say something matters. <laughs> I say what they do matters. Ah, Pippi, seven seconds left. I want to thank you for being my guest. You're um, a wonderful hostess. You're a good talker-overer. Thank you for joining us. Good night.